I've got some gift ideas. Get your tea or coffee, because there's a lot. You've got an artist in your life, you wanna buy them gifts. And I know what a lot of you are thinking while I was at Costco the other day, fighting those crowds, you are braver than I, and they had an art kit. There's always these like kit, Christmas gift art kits that has a little box and supplies in it. These are good for kids. I think that kids will really appreciate them, but if you're shopping for somebody who is like mid to older teens or an adult, those aren't the best, most useful kits for most of us. It's usually like super, super, I don't wanna say beginner supplies because beginner supplies should still be quality if for most adults. It's hard to learn on beginner supplies. Kids, fine, no biggie. But we, we wanna avoid giving gifts or spending money on gifts that the artist just can't use. And trust me, I've been there. We're gonna act super appreciative but those supplies probably aren't gonna get touched. Maybe the box, the boxes are kind of cool in those sets, but you could just buy the box for cheaper. So what do you get instead? So first, speaking of boxes, let's think outside that box. If you really don't know what supplies the artist already has, what to get them, here's my first option. And we are gonna go into the supplies in just a moment. But the first thing I wanna to bring up as a possibility is artist motivational like gear and stuff like coffee mugs, things that they can use for themselves while they're painting, something to just kind of get them in the mood to paint. So coffee mugs are fun. I just released a new one on my merch store. It's chicken with don't drink the paint water. I ordered one for myself. I wish it was already it was here. I could have it in this video, but it's on the way. So you can do something like that. I've got t-shirts, I've got sweatshirts that read different things that artists say, like don't drink the paint water, layer till it looks good. Words are hard. We've got a lot of those in my merch store. So that may be an option if you're not sure what supplies they like, but you want to get them something art related. If you're gonna get them a mug, you can get a selection of different teas they may like or coffees or whatever it is that they like to drink. You can get them a selection of that. I'm currently Currently obsessed, by the way, with this stash decaf pumpkin spice black tea. One of you guys suggested I try that on a recent live stream. I kind of love you forever, whoever it was. Let me know in the description because I forget who mentioned it. Oh, I'm obsessed. But if you get them that mug and you fill it with different types of tea or make a basket, a gift basket is a really fun thing to do with artists and put stocking stuffer type things around that, which we will go into now. So you've got them all set to draw. You've got them a cute art coffee mug and there are tons of art mugs out there. I'm not saying mine are the only ones, I obviously promote mine, but there are a lot of options there. Something fun, and it doesn't even have to be an art cup. Like I've got this one here that says coffee then adulting. I've got tea in it, I'm doing it wrong. But it's huge, and I love this when I'm painting because I can make myself this huge cup of tea or coffee, whatever, whatever they prefer, and that sits with me at my easel. So it's not even that it has to be an art related one, it's just something that I use while I'm painting. Although I'm switching to the chicken, don't drink paint water cup soon. Okay, so what about other stocking stuffers? These are things you could put in a gift basket like we were just talking, or just in a, they work as stocking stuffers. Things that all artists always need. It doesn't matter what medium you work in, they probably are going to need these things. First, pencil sharpeners. I like these little handheld metal coom type pencil sharpeners. They don't last forever and I lose them. Two problems right there. I probably have a million of them slid under my easel right now that have fallen and I just haven't found them yet. I bet they have spiders living in them. But they go dull, they don't last forever. So even if the artist isn't losing them, they probably need more. It's always time for more. And when they go dull, it starts causing our pencil leads to break. So this is a great way and they're fairly inexpensive. I really like the little handheld ones, but just a bunch of different sharpeners in there. Trust me, the artist is going to get use out of that. Speaking of things we are always losing, but always need erasers. This sounds like, oh, of course, they've already got erasers. No, trust me, we've lost them. By the time we find one, we lost another one. Like, it's ridiculous. So some of my favorite erasers are the Tombow Mono Eraser. This is a little pen. It gives you tons of tiny details. So especially with erasing graphite or charcoal and getting those highlights back in, wonderful eraser. There's a Pentel Click Eraser. So this I really like when I'm doing sketchbooks and looser sketches where I want to to have something with a little bit more control, but not as much fine detail as the Tombow Mono Eraser. Love these. Faber-Castell kneaded eraser, really any kneaded eraser. I like the Faber-Castell ones. These are great. You can form them into different shapes. Vanish and Stedler erasers. These are very similar, but these are not as crumbly. They're not gonna make a mess. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice on my list of erasers, not fun colored erasers. Now you can get them something that's like a fun eraser that's just gonna sit on their desk, like they make different shapes and stuff. But in actual artwork, we can't really use or we shouldn't really be using the purples and pinks and the fun colors because those can leave marks on our work. 
that color comes off the eraser sometimes. I've had that happen a few too many times. So stick to like the white, the gray, the there's the uh, rubber type eraser. Those work. But any eraser, and it doesn't have to be these specific ones. These are just some of the ones that I like, you know, in case you're shopping for me. How about shading tools? That's another one that is pretty useful and very inexpensive. Great stocking stuffer. This is going to be most useful for artists who work in charcoal or graphite. That's my main use personally for them. My list is over here. If you're like, why do you keep looking off to the side? It's not a nervous tick. It's just my list and I'm bad at editing. I'm bad, I'm bad at filming. How is this my job? Next, one of my favorite, favorite books is a Bob Ross quotes book. This is so much fun to read his little motivation, just different things he said. I love it. I use it all the time when I'm trying to come up with quotes to post on my social media. That's where I get half of my Bob Ross ones are out of this book. So that one's a really fun one. Okay, what about other art supplies? So the basics would be graphite pencils. My favorite two brands are the Faber Castell 9000 series and, and the Derwent Graphics. Both of those are excellent, excellent pencils. And I'm not as picky, and most artists I wouldn't say are as picky with graphite as they may be with other mediums, but you can't go wrong with either of those sets. And graphite's a fairly inexpensive medium, so you can get them a full set for not a ton of money. Next, and this one's fun because a lot of artists don't even know about this product or they've seen it on the shelf and they didn't know what it was for. The Faber-Castell Graphite Aquarell. These are water-soluble graphite pencils. It even comes with the perfect paintbrush for using these. So you shade in a little bit with the pencil and then you use this brush and it blends it out. And it is one of the most fun mediums I have ever worked in. Uh, the first time I tried it, I just had the stupidest grin on my face. It's very inexpensive, will make people happy promise. Next, you can get them started with charcoal for really inexpensive. I really like using a combination of the General's white and black charcoal pencils. These are wonderful. Most artists I know like to work at night. We're going to need a daylight bulb or a daylight lamp. I use one that clamps onto my easel. They also make ones that sit on tables or sit on the floor. You've got tons of options. Those are definitely going to get used by any artist unless they work outside. Then it's probably not useful. Also working outside in the dark. I don't know, artists, we are a weird bunch. You don't know what we're gonna do. For artists, the paper type they're going to use is going to depend on what medium they like best. So one of my favorites, Can Send Me Tens. I use the rough side for charcoal or pastels. I use the smooth side for colored pencil. I really like the gray pad that has multiple shades of gray in it. I also really like the Arches Hot Press Watercolor. You can get this in blocks or in pads. Wonderful. I mostly use it for colored pencil, watercolor, and ink tents, or even the, the graphite aquarelles, the water-soluble graphite we were just talking about works great for those. So that's a wonderful, wonderful paper. And then sketchbooks. Sketchbooks are good to have. It You don't even really have to worry that much about the quality of sketchbooks because when, at least for me, if I use a sketchbook, it's to sketch out quick ideas, rough sketches, color composition, stuff like that. I'm not really worried about having the perfect paper for the perfect technique. It's just almost like an idea book. I mean, you can list it as that. Look, I'm giving you marketing tips for your gifts. But several sketchbooks, different types of sketchbooks, that would be a great gift too. Now we are getting into the higher end products. So colored pencils. If you have an artist you know loves a colored pencil, my favorite brands are going to be the Faber-Castell Polychromos, Derwent Lightfast, and Caran d'Ache Luminance. Oh, and Derwent Drawing Sets. I've got links to all these in the video description. Now you may look at those sets and go, oh my God, I'm gonna have to take a mortgage out of my house. You can get them a set of 12, especially the Polychromos set of 12 is a good set of colors um, in that smaller set. You can get them a small set and they're, this is great for beginners too, if they're having to learn how to blend colors and mix, get them those and they're gonna learn more from blending and working with a smaller set than they would the full set. So, you know, you can, I'm, I'm again helping you to market your gifts to your receivers. But those are wonderful. And I would rather see somebody get a small set of high quality pencils than a huge set of crap. For kids, the huge set of crap is fine. They aren't super picky. But for somebody who's trying to really get good with their colored pencil, they're going to have more success there if they're using quality pencils. And that set of 12 polychromos is great. But all of those pencils that I listed, you're not going to go wrong with anyone. Those brands are amazing. Next, and I have to mention these because it's my artwork on the tin, the Derwent Ink Tents. I love these. These are so fun. These work great for sketchbooks. They work great. They're a very fast medium, so I like them if I need to get something done quickly that I want to make prints out of. These are one of my go-tos. We've got the Derwent Ink Tents pencils. I haven't even opened this set, but we've got pencils. So it's kind of like, think if you're not familiar with these, it's like watercolor, but permanent. So it's not going to lift again. Then we've got the Derwent Ink 
intense blocks. And you can see there, they are individual blocks. I use these like pan watercolors. If you're only going to do one, I personally prefer the blocks over the, the pencils. I feel like these are more versatile in the way that you can, well, you use them like a pan watercolor. I take a brush, I wet it, I mix my color and then apply that with the brush onto the paper. I don't take the blocks and scribble on the paper and try to blend that out. You can do that. I don't get the best results that way. I I really like them as I would use a watercolor pan. But given the choice, I like them both. They work so well together. And you don't even need the full huge sets of those because you can mix colors really well. Next, powder blender kits. This is from brushandpencil.com, although you can get it at Blick, I think Jackson's Art Supply in the UK, Delta Art in Canada. I forget who in Australia has it, but this is wonderful for blending colored pencils. It's just a different method. It almost makes them behave like pastels without having the mess of pastels. With this with this specific product, you're also going to want to get them the Lux Archival sanded paper. It only works with sanded paper. It doesn't work on any other type of paper. There are other brands of sanded paper, Paper, but the Lux Archival is the only one that is archival front and back. The other ones are not, unfortunately. They've been lying to us. So yeah, Lux Archival with the brush and pencil powder blender kit. It is, it's a completely different way to use colored pencils. So that's really cool. And though that product works best for blending with the Faber-Castell Polychroma. So if you've got an artist you're shopping for that uses those pencils, this is a great, great gift. Painting supplies. So my choice of acrylic and oil paints is not what a lot of people's are. I like very translucent paints because I work in layers. I do, I'll put a link to my supply list in the video description. So if you wanna check out my full supply list, you can head over there. But I'm not gonna get too much into the paint because that is one artists are really picky on. And I know I use one that a lot of artists don't like unless they use my methods. So instead, let's talk about canvases. Frederick's watercolor canvas board. I don't even use this for watercolor. I need to try it with ink tents and watercolor, but I use it for my acrylics. It is so smooth. So if you're working, if you have an artist who likes tons of detail, smooth blending, the watercolor canvas boards, I really like those. Plus they're easy to store. The other is, favorite for me is the Frederick's Blue Label Ultra Smooth Canvas. So same thing, very, very smooth. This is going to be a stretched canvas. Very, very smooth canvas. Great for blending, fine detail. You're not going to go wrong with that. Other thing I really like is the Frederick's Canvas Pad. This is great for, I used to use this all the time for students when I show them how to do quick little samples, like different practicing brush strokes. We don't really want to ruin the big stretch canvas or, or work on that for those practice brush strokes. Having a canvas pad that can handle the water, it can handle the paint. So if you're glazing, if you're doing things that paper gets a little angry about, this canvas pad, it's like a, a sheet of paper, except it's can it's actual gessoed canvas. So really good for practicing. You could do finished artwork on it, but I don't use it for that. I use it for more like practicing certain brush strokes and such. Or if I'm demonstrating for somebody else, that's what I mostly use it for these days. But that's a really good one. A very inexpensive way for someone to have a practice canvas. And they can just keep repainting over the same ones again and again when they're practicing different techniques. Paint it black or paint it white again, and then practice those techniques again. Does the artist need an easel? You're going to see a lot of those like $10 little tri like triangle type frames, the A-frames. I wouldn't waste my money on those. They're too lightweight. So if an artist is painting and here's their canvas and they put pressure with the brush, the whole easel pushes back. You want to get them something that is more heavyweight. So it costs a little bit more, but it's so nice. And for that price, that, pay that easel, it's not that bad. That I... If I have affiliate links, I can't mention prices. It's a weird Amazon role. So you would just have to click the links in the video description. But that easel there is the, pretty much the one. It's not the exact brand because the brand I bought was from like 30 years ago, 20 or 25 years ago. I don't know. I can't count. We're not here for math. But I had one of these until I got my new upgraded like BMW of easels. Is that a nice car? I don't know cars. What's a better example? Ferrari? I don't know. What did my Barbie have as a kid? Oh wait, my I, I was poor. My Barbie didn't have a car. My Barbie walked, but I lost her shoes, so it, it was uncomfortable. Anyway, the easel that I had used for most of my career was one of these H-frames. Very inexpensive for the quality you're getting, and they really do last a long time. They're very heavyweight, so it's not something you're going to take with you out on the field or anything. You're going to park them wherever you like to paint, and that's where it's going to sit. Almost like a piece of furniture. But it's nice because you can use it with big canvases, small canvases. They are just so, so great. So if, if the artist doesn't have an easel, this would be my suggestion. Next, and this is something that I, I wish more gift givers would consider art storage supplies. I know I love to organize things a lot, obsessively so. I have issues. I'm an artist. I'm supposed to have issues. These are great. The first is this cart. 
I will say, while I do have it linked in on Amazon and the price there seems to be the same that most uh, box stores carry it for, sometimes the box stores will go on huge sales. Heck, even sometimes Amazon does. So you can get this at a discount if you are really watching for that. I know, I think I bought mine at Michael's. But this cart, I have one that holds all of my pencil and graphite, charcoal, colored pencil supplies, and then another one holds all my acrylic supplies. It is so convenient and it's so nice to have everything in one place, but it also doesn't take up a ton of room, yet it's super easy to access. They're a three tier storage cart. You've got little containers where you put your pencil. It, it's, they're great. I love them, can't recommend them enough. Another suggestion is a wood storage box. I have so many of these for all of my pencils. I have one for each brand of pencil or markers that I use. So these are really good too, fairly inexpensive for how useful they are. How about getting the artist a subscription? Colored Pencil Magazine, if they are a colored pencil artist, he, heck, even if they're not, it is my favorite, favorite art magazine. This is a magazine that about once a year I'll contribute an article and they'll have little tutorials. They've got motivational things. They've got tips. They've got supplies. It is such a good magazine. I love it. And you can get the digital version too. So if you're like me and you don't want a ton of magazines all over the house, I just get it digitally and I can want, read it on my phone, my tablet, whatever. How about a subscription to an art lesson? I personally, of course, I'm going to recommend myself. I've got my Patreon art lesson lessons for as little as $4 a month, the student gets access to instantly to over 300 of my videos. There's different tiers with different rewards. Depending on the tier you get them, they can get postcards, they can get stickers or greeting cards, coloring pages. I've got a ton of stuff over there for you to check out, but that's a really fun one too. And for me, I work in multiple mediums. So just about any medium that artist works in, I've got stuff for them. Another really useful thing is a subscription, if they don't already have it, to Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop. That is, oh, is it useful for an artist? We take a photo of our work, but the photo doesn't quite come out right. We need to adjust color, make some editing there, or for designing our artwork. I use it to design my work all the time, but that is one that is really, really helpful for artists. I'm curious, those of you who are watching, are you watching this video because you're looking to buy something for someone else or because you're hoping someone will buy these things for you? Let me know in the comments. Hey husband, what'd you get me for Christmas? You gave it to me once, then you sold it to me for $2, and now you're giving it to me again for Christmas. Have you subscribed yet? If not, have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy bit. What? Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's around, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all my new art videos every single week. Also click on the bell notification icon because YouTube is terrible about notifying people when new content goes up or sign up for my email newsletter. Link for everything, including all these supplies are listed in the video description.